Many Clemson fans there for the sugar. I'm over here with Richard. He's following the roads and we're taking a live look. I-85 southbound at Highway 290. That is correct. We're starting to see traffic volumes pick up on 85, but still no problems on 85 to tell you. At some point, somebody's going to call in rich, as Dale likes to say. That. And a great <laughs> start to the New Year's. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. That that would help, wouldn't it? Pay that off all those Christmas uh, presents that you bought that you uh, still have to pay for for the first few months of the year sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, a fight at a Waffle House here. Some sad news here. Actress Rosemary has died. She was made famous as the wisecracking Sally Rodwell. Her family said she died last night in her California home. Marie was a child star of the 1920s and 1930s. She endeared herself to TV fans on the classic 60s Mary Tyler Moore. Rosemary was 94 years old. It is so cold up north, even Brandywine Falls in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park near Cleveland is frozen solid in the 20s and teens for the next several days in Ohio, so it probably isn't going to thaw anytime soon. To the latest now on the controversy over Apple purposely slowing down old phones. The tech giant is now apologizing for it, saying it was necessary to avoid shut to sell newer iPhones of a replacement battery from $50 to $29. It used to issue a new update to all of its phones early next year. Well, good. Yeah. They should. <laughs> they really should. What happening, didn't we? And when they admitted to it, we're like, yeah, we've been talking about this. Wow. Well, a huge digital sales. And Donald Trump is once again weighing in on the Russia investigation. This time in a wide ranging interview with the New York Times, Nicole Killian has more from our exclusive Washington newsroom. Are you going to be doing, Brennan, when? Morning, filling in yeah. for you. Because yeah. you'll be on Bourbon Street. And I'll be, I'll be <laughs> in New Orleans, and I will not be in Bourbon Street because I'll be up in the middle of the night. Uh, yes. Doing our coverage there um, with Clemson Editing, playing on New Year's and Day. Working. So, should Into be a lot of fun. Wee hours of 2018. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll walk downtown. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up in our morning buzz, one dog thinks and is met with 65 inches of snow. How he reacts, that's next. 624 now, time for your morning buzz. Cue the goal. Drumming skills there. <laughs> All right, so this dog in Pennsylvania just couldn't resist the temptation to play in the snow. His name is Oakley, a two-year-old German <laughs> shepherd. And his owner says that Oakley loves snow, but he's never seen so very. He got a record 65 inches of snowfall this week. And the dog was hesitant when he saw that much white stuff at first, but didn't take him to figure out. And we put our dog out the door, and he's oh, out there in the snow. And uh, when Richard comes, Richard comes bringing something. Wow. He brought me fruit. When you say you're minding your own business at my house, nothing good is going to wow. come of it. So I'm looking at WIF4.com and I come across this headline. Warming up your car before you head over again. So <laughs> I'm an accessory before the fact. Uh, wow. I go to jail. A lot of people warm <laughs> up their car. Back. And they're going to really be warming up their car come New Year's. Oh, it's going to be so cold. Yeah. I mean, and today will not be as bad. As well, so many. Round three against Alabama. That's right. The Sugar Bowl happens Monday in New Orleans. You know that by now. Both teams getting ready. Brad Frelick is in New Orleans. 15-year-old is in custody in connection with armed robberies in Greenville County. He faces several charges, including armed robbery kidnapping and several weapons charges. Police say the teen is one of several people who robbed two women at gunpoint. The first half of Wood Mall Thursday the second was at the Parkside at Verde Apartments off Woodruff Road. 11-year-old Rico Carter says he and his friends picnic quickly turned to panic. Highway Patrol later caught the Dodge. Spartanburg Police confirms this is the same car that was stolen at Crescent Hills Apartments Wednesday night. The search continues for other people involved. Police in Spartanburg need your help finding the shooter morning along Whitner Avenue. The victims told police they were asleep when more than a 10 shots were not heard. South Liberty Street. The victims say they were getting ready for bed when they heard. 645 in our news to go, and we know chilly temps are really going to be coming. We'll get with Chris here in just a moment. Yeah, but first, traffic reporter Richard Edmonds. 25, time for your morning buzz. In this round, it was Paco the Chihuahua 1, Coyote 0. All right, so Paco's an 18. The man arrested in Virginia for allegedly shooting at state troopers is also wanted here in the upstate. Jarrell Rich, it's a South Carolina story making national headlines this morning. Officials with the South Carolina Education Lottery are now responding after a glitch made people think they had winning tickets. The lottery says its computer system vendor, Intralot, experienced a problem.
programming error. It impacted holiday cash out of play tickets. The lottery says it is reviewing the incident and says if you have a ticket, hold on to it until the review is complete. The lottery plans to make another announcement about the situation by the end of the week. 634 now and his comments cause an uproar. Now a Republican congressman is walking back on his statement to purge the FBI. But now he's reversing course on his earlier comments. Nicole Killian has more from our exclusive Washington newsroom. This Thursday morning at 644. We'll have a check of the weather in just a moment. We got frigid temps. We do. First yep. traffic reporter Richard Edmond is in the studio. He's going to give us the latest update on the roads. Richard. Well, Dan, at least 41 people are dead and 81 more hurt after two simultaneous explosions in Kabul. The blast happened outside a cultural center in the capital city and outside a news agency. So far, ISIS claimed responsibility for the cultural center, center attack. No group has been in New Orleans after getting a little workout. Oh, will ever treat you as well as the Rose Bowl does. So I, yeah, I've yeah. always loved that matchup when they go head to head. Oh, and yeah. We'll see if it happens. Well, George. Interception away from holding the all time record for picks at South Carolina. That record is held currently by our own Allison Powell's father, Bo Davies. That's right. Well, the 2008 the country today, the Georgia Bulldogs take on the Oklahoma Sooners tonight. Media one last time before the head coaches in the national semifinals. Smart's been impressed with the balance of bowl week and the mix of business and pleasure. You know, the university, uh, Coach Stoops, Coach Rob, you know, they, they've got a tremendous done. Uh, it's been a place that uh, has set a standard, not only in their conference, but in the country. So we're excited to get an opportunity to play a really good program in them. The Dogs take on the Sooners tonight at 5 o'clock. And South Carolina taking on Michigan today in the Outback Bowl. USC head coach Blue. And wall-to-wall -wall football to ring in the new year. South Carolina squaring off with Michigan in the Outback Bowl at noon, followed by the Rose Bowl and the first national semifinal. The nightcap, Alabama and Clemson facing off at 845. New details overnight on a shooting that left one deputy dead and four others injured in Colorado. The Doug our area now, troopers in Anderson County say the driver of a moped involved in a hit-and-run incident died yesterday. And Dale joins us again for weather and bitter cold out there. Oh, yeah, and factor in the breeze and the cold temperatures this morning. Your family, we hope you are a little warmer for your celebration than the people who bring own chilling temperatures to see the world famous ball drop. The crowd with the wind chill factor did not seem to mind. And President Year's Eve was a big day for Hart former NFL coach Sam Weich participating on the Donate Life Rose Parade float. Yeah, it was Judge Floats in the parade. Weich feels certain the Donate Life float had a big impact on the Rose Parade judges. The Donate Life Rose Parade float hopes to inspire more people to register. Important reminder during this cold stretch, you need to protect your pipes. You'll want to wrap exposed pipes with insulation or newspapers and allow faucets to drip a little to avoid freezing. Make sure you know how to shut off water valves in case a pipe bursts. You can also keep your cabinets open in the kitchen and bathrooms. That allows warmer air to circulate around the plumbing. Happy New Year. Thousands of revelers rang in 2018 at the Peach Hall at a new location in Woodruff Park downtown. Entertainers like TLC, GZ, and Tyrese performed for thousands bundled up on the chilly New Year's Eve night. Also, thousands gathered in Key West, Florida for a New Year's Eve tradition, the famous shoe drop. Celebrity drag queen Sushi was lowered in a giant red high heel shoe from the balcony of the Bourbon Street Pub at midnight. Sushi has been the center stage for the shoe drop since the 1990s. A fireworks show ignited the sky over Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom in Florida to ring in the new year. Their annual special fantasy in the sky started about 10 minutes before midnight, ran straight through. The crowd counted down the new year and cheered on 2018 in the midnight frenzy of color and light. Tinkerbell made an appearance flying over the crowd there. Unlike much of the rest of the country, cold weather was never a threat to this celebration. It's officially 2018, which means new laws are on the books. This year, changes range from the cutting edge to the unconventional. Today ushers in a host of new state laws around the country, such as the legalization of recreational marijuana in California, including growing and selling it. In Tennessee, if you pass the small arms or combat pistol training course in the U.S. military, you no longer Barack Obama Day. Divorcing couples will now have their assets. Well, most Americans are making a New Year's resolution. Almost 90% of creditworthy Americans in 2018. 
according to tax. The top ways Americans say they plan to save money include adding more to their savings account, paying down credit card debt, creating a budget. One in four Americans say they typically solutions, and women are more likely than men to make a resolution about paying down credit card debt. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un warned the United States that the nuclear button is always on his desk. He said this in his New Year's address to his country, according to a CNN translation of his speech. He also declared that his country is, quote, a responsible nuclear nation that loves peace. Despite those declarations, Kim then called for accelerated production of nuclear warheads and ballistic missiles. Pacific Coast Carter was headed for San Jose when it crashed. Investigators are working to figure out why the plane went down. Well, as winter weather hits, many parts of the wheel drive can help keep a car from getting stuck, but deeper grooves to channel snow and keep more of the tire in contact with the road. They also have rubber compounds that are formulated. New winter tires generally cost one to two bucks to a frozen. Photos show just how dangerous driving on an open lake bed. Two of its wheels bearing it by about there's still some water left, which is why authorities have to drive on. However, they say you can walk on it or maybe even use an ATV in certain areas. Well, homeowners were lining up in Chicago to prepay their property taxes before the newly signed tax law goes into effect today. When the new law takes effect, many taxpayers will lose a benefit that they're used to having. That's because the law places a new cap on state and local income and property tax deductions. The Cook County Treasurer extended a.m. to 5 p.m. On new into how the U.S. Judiciary's own ranks. That's according to Chief Justice in his annual State of the Judiciary report yesterday. He said it's now clear the judicial branch is not immune from allegations of sexual harassment. He said the judiciary will evaluate if its standards are enough to ensure an exemplary high procedures for investment. Woman who helped launch the square New Year's Eve ball drop. Tarana Burke is a social activist along with actress Melissa Milano. She got the hashtag MeToo movement going last October ball in New York. She also said, quote, with the new year comes new momentum to fuel this work. And we well, a $1,000 reward is at stake for anyone who can find Smokey the Bear. The Broad River Fire Department reported someone stole the Smokey the Bear fire danger sign on Friday night. This picture shows all that's left after the sign was taken. Fire officials say the sign helps the community know how likely a fire may spark. And this picture shows what the sign would look like, or should look like, excuse me. Anyone with information should call the Buncombe County Sheriff's Office or the Broad River Fire Department. Your call may remain anonymous, and you could be eligible for a near $1,000 reward. Well, straight ahead in our morning buzz, Mother Nature sure does have a mind of its own. How you can do this at home, coming up. Well, in this morning's buzz, Mother Nature providing an beautiful sight. This is really cool. This is a soap bubble freezing in low temperatures. So the star that you see there, that's real, guys. That's sugar-like appearance as the bubble freezes. How cool is that? The woman who filmed this tape, a regular, I kind of want to try that now. Although I don't want to be outside. Happy New Year. I'm Allison Powell. And I'm Brenna McDavid filling in for Jeff Hart. He's having fun in New Orleans right <laughs> now covering Clemson and the Sugar Bowl. Last minute preps are underway ahead of the Rose Parade. And the cold weather is causing Delta Airlines to issue travel waivers to customers in the southeast. The airline made the announcement on Twitter yesterday. According to CNN meteorologist Monica Garrett, more than 100 million people are under windchill warnings or advisories. The southeast will see temps 10 to 15 degrees below normal this week. Well, a massive and deadly pileup on a New York interstate leaves dozens of vehicles stranded. The exact number of vehicles involved in crashes on I-90 is unclear, but it's believed the total is about 22 across more than 15 separate accidents, likely a chain reaction there. Officials have confirmed one person was killed in the pileup. The cause of the accidents is unknown, but conditions, as you see here, are snowy with temperatures in the teens, so weather could be a factor. Breaking news this morning out of New York, where a fire ripped through several apartment buildings last night, injuring six firefighters. Officials say the fire tore through three residential buildings in Brooklyn. It's not clear what sparked the blaze. Flames could be seen shooting out of the windows as smoke filled the air. Fire officials on the scene say at least three firefighters were hurt when a stairway collapsed under them. They were taken to a hospital with minor injuries.
WYFF News 4. You have another chance to strike it rich. No one matched all six numbers in Tuesday night's Mega Millions drawing. That means the jackpot has gone up from $361 million to an estimated $418 million. There were some smaller prize winners here. Two tickets sold matched five numbers. If you want to double check the numbers here, 142, 47, 64, 70, and the Mega Ball was 22. The next Mega Millions drawing is Friday night. Well, consumers are not taking proactive steps to keep their personal information protected from identity theft. That's according to a recent survey. 61% of those surveyed said they are more worried about cybersecurity today than five years ago. But only 37% have signed up for an identity theft protection solution. And 28% say they have no plans to sign up for one. Research shows consumers monitor their identity by checking online bank and credit card accounts for unauthorized charges and checking social media for fraudulent posts. Well, the upcoming Olympic Games in South Korea next month present an opportunity for North and South Korea to resume peaceful talks. South Korean officials now suggesting a meeting at the most dangerous border on earth, the demilitarized zone in the buildings known as Truce Village, where guards stare each other down. There are talks of North Korea's figure skaters gliding across the border for the Winter Games with Kim Jong-un's blessing. Well, the Russian Armed Forces has unveiled its latest cutting-edge weapon in a New Year greetings video, Cuddly Puppies. After a year of showing off its military might in Syria, the Defense Ministry has taken a softer approach. Dozens of puppies are seen sharing food and playing with each other. Over 3,000 dogs are employed in the Russian military. This dog breeding center outside of Moscow won an international competition last summer against the canine forces of Belarus, Egypt, Iran, and Uzbekistan. Pakistan. Well, some quick thinking from an Iowa basketball coach resulted in him saving his team and the bus driver. Justin Smith is an assistant basketball coach at the University of Dubuque. His team was headed home from a five-day trip to Nashville. When the bus jumped into action, he steered the vehicle back onto the road and stopped it. The driver suddenly collapsed over the steering wheel. As it began to veer, Justin, even though he knows he saved the day, he's hesitant to call himself a hero. And luckily, no one on board was injured in the accident. There's no word on what caused the bus driver to pass out. Weight Watchers is hoping a new endorsement could fatten its stock portfolio. Global pop music star DJ Khaled has signed on to be a social media ambassador for the company. He says he's lost 20 pounds on the program and is sharing his success with millions of followers on social media. Weight Watchers stock rose more than 6% on Tuesday. And country music star Carrie Underwood is revealing more about the injury she sustained in a November accident. At the time, her publicist said Underwood broke her wrist and suffered cuts after falling down some stairs. But in a New Year's Day fan club letter, the singer said she also had considerable facial injuries. Underwood says she had to have between 40 and 50 stitches on her face. She wrote that when she's ready to get in front of a camera again, she wants fans to understand why she, quote, might look a little bit different. Well, the Grinch visited Idaho this past holiday season, and while he may not have quite stolen Christmas, what he made off with was caught on camera. Many people in Boise celebrate Christmas, but someone at the city's annual tree uh, lighting there lacked Christmas cheer. Police are investigating while Boise will have to have another, find another bright star before Christmas this next year. And police don't know who stole the star and say it would cost about $500 to replace. Unfortunately, no one has seen the Boise Grinch's face. Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy will be remembered in Greenville starting next Saturday. It will be celebrated through King Legacy Week. It'll kick off at 10 a.m. next Saturday at the Bethlehem Baptist Church Family Life Center. The King Legacy HBCU STEM Fair. In sports news this morning, Wofford getting a new head football coach. Josh Conklin will take over the Terriers program. Conklin spent the past three seasons as the defensive coordinator at the University of Pittsburgh. This is somewhat of a return home for Conklin. He was an assistant coach at Wofford from 2007 to 2009. Conklin has also worked at Florida International, Tennessee, the Citadel, and South Dakota State. Well, straight ahead in this morning's buzz, an amazing discovery off the coast of Mexico. The details on this sunken ship. 
In this morning's buzz, an incredible discovery off the coast of a small seaport town in Mexico. Yeah, a team of archaeologists found centuries-old remains of an 18th-century Dutch warship and a 19th-century British steamboat. They were found off the Yucatan Peninsula. Divers also found cannons not far from the warship. Experts think the ship's crew threw them overboard trying to stay afloat. They were found not far from an old port town. It's now full of beach resorts. Hmm. Interesting. How about that? Very So cool. apparently they don't know anything else about this ship so far. Was there treasure? <laughs> arr, arr. <laughs> we knew the pirate talk would <laughs> yeah, come out eventually. That's right. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be searching all around, won't they? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's okay. pretty cool. I love stuff like that. All right, your news continues right now. At 6 o'clock now, good morning. I'm Allison Powell. And I'm Britta McDavid. Another frigid morning as students across the upstate go back to school today. Some had to brave the cold yesterday, and almost every other county starts back up this morning. Weather there, freezing temps continue to bring concern this morning. Greenville County Schools doing their part to keep the bus riders warm this morning. WYFF News 4's Aubrey Jackson joins us live from Greer, where the buses are warming up. Aubrey. That's right. So we heard Dale talking about the cold temperatures. We're feeling and seeing that out here this morning. Now here at the Taylor's Bus Center, you can actually see the buses are all set up here running actually because you know kids head back to school today. The crews tell me that they've actually been engine warm and keep everything moving so they don't have any maintenance issues that could be expected. So they're trying to avoid that at all costs. Now Greenville County Schools actually plans to keep an eye on the temperatures and what students are wearing so that they can make adequate decisions when it comes to outdoor events events throughout the day, like if kids can even go outside for recess. So we're just kind of watching how um, everything's going on here at the Taylor's Bus Center. If you have any issues or concerns about your child health wise, the school district is suggesting that you contact the school principal for that. Live at Taylor's Bus Center, Aubrey Jackson, WYFF News 4. Thank you, Aubrey. A warning this morning from firefighters to think before you step out on a frozen lake, pond, or river. Firefighters say it can be tempting to test the waters and skate on the ice. However, officials warn getting on the ice can lead to other dangers. Nearly 22 years ago, two boys died in Greenville County after falling into icy cold water. Hypothermia can shut down your body's core, making it difficult to move your arms and legs. Firefighters also warn to keep your pets off the ice. Well, another reminder this morning to keep your family safe. Check your chimney. Your chimneys cause several house fires every year because soot can build up inside without you knowing. The experts urge you to get your chimney inspected every year. Burning a fire for a longer time than usual can put you at risk if your chimney is not up to standard. A typical chimney sweep and inspection will cost you around $300. And remember, you can get live temperature updates all day on the WY54 mobile app. That's where you'll find any weather alerts the second that they are issued. Congress welcomes two new members to Capitol Hill today when the U.S. Senate returns from the holiday break. Democrats killed on South Carolina roads during the New Year's holiday weekend, but numbers out this morning show traffic fatalities went down last year. Across the state, there were 964 deaths in 2017. That's compared to 1,020 in 2016. So Greenville County here, 70 deaths in 2017. There were 17 fewer the year before. 87 people died in 2016. To Anderson County now in 2017, 43 people lost their lives compared to 57 who died in 2016. And finally, in Spartanburg County, a small decline here. 51 people died. Breaking news this morning out of New York City. Six firefighters were hurt in 2017 compared to 54 the year before. Battling an apartment fire in Brooklyn. Fast moving this morning, you now have 418 million reasons to play the Mega Millions on Friday, no one hit the jackpot in last night's drawing, making the jackpot worth $418 million. If you win and take the lump sum, it will be a $261 million cash payout. The odds of picking all six numbers is 1 in 302.6 million. At 6.07, traffic and weather together now. First, Dale, the frigid temperatures mm. continue. Yeah, it does. In fact, they're actually going to get colder in the next couple of nights as the wind comes back. Not too windy for the latest. All right, thank you, Dale. Richard, you figure out the computer? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. You and Brennan have given me a crash you. course here with this thing. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, a friend of mine used to say, it's the loose nut behind the monitor. <laughs> okay. It's me. Okay. 
Okay. And we've got it figured well, out. Well, we can help you if you need it. Thank you very much. Let's <laughs> open for 85 this morning as you travel this. News. This is WIFF News 4 Today. 12 minutes after 6 now, U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley praised the protesters of Iran today. She's calling for the United Nations Security Council to hold an emergency meeting. Haley says the people of Iran are crying out for freedom against their country's dictatorship. At least 21 people have been killed in the protest. Ambassador Haley also talked about several other topics, including South Korea's calls for high-level talks with North Korea. New metal barriers are coming to the sidewalks of New York City. It's a way to help stop terror attacks and keep pedestrians safer. It comes after an ISIS-inspired attack back in October. A pickup truck barreled down a crowded Manhattan bicycle path. Eight people were killed. The city installed protective concrete barriers at high-profile locations in 2017. Officials will replace them with permanent metal barriers starting in March. The mayor said that in addition to fighting terrorism, the barriers will protect against reckless driving. Next, a big change to McDonald's burgers is now being tested. Trump ratcheting up tensions with North Korea by launching a high-stakes Twitter war with Kim Jong-un. Jennifer Davis has new information on our exclusive. Well, I can't give you any input because I don't eat McDonald's. <laughs> I know, but if that's trying to change their image, I think that is the big image with fast food restaurants is using the frozen beef and the you know yeah, ground up. Food. Yeah, processed food, ground up patties and such. Yeah. So. We'll see if it works. We shall see. Well, we are waking up to more on this deep freeze sweeping across much of this country, including the southern icon you see here in your morning buzz is next. 624, time for your morning buzz now. An iconic fountain is no match for an Arctic blast plaguing the South this morning. Check out this fountain in Forsyth Park in Savannah, Georgia's historic district. The fountain is covered in a layer of ice after temperatures plunged well below freezing. Icicles dangle from the fountain. Cherubs frozen in the ice, a rare sight in Savannah for sure. We don't have to go far to find that. I think uh, Tim Waller posted a picture of uh, Weston Points at downtown. The fountain there also frozen. Yeah, <laughs> we had a live shot from there last week of it. So yeah, I yeah. was in downtown Sparmer yesterday. There's what I call the water ball. It's this huge ball that's a waterfall that was completely frozen over. And crews oh, were yeah. out with uh, propane heaters oh, gosh. trying to get all the ice off of that before I guess it collapsed the ball. Warning: We say do not put propane heaters on pipes if your pipes freeze. Correct. Just yeah. making sure we clarify that. <laughs> I won't buy them this morning. I'll tell them and I'll steer very clear. Tell them that's not a good plan. Oh, Just making man. sure because we have sent that warning out before. <laughs> Well, stay warm however you need to. Well, freezing temperatures continuing to bring concern this morning. Greenville County Schools doing their part to keep bus riders warm. Yeah, WYFF News 4's Aubrey Jackson joins us live from Greer with more. Good morning, Aubrey. Yes, yeah, so students are actually heading back to school today and it is bitter cold outside. Actually here at the Taylor's Bus Center, you can see a lot of the buses are on at this point. Some are making their way out onto their routes, but many of them have been um, going on and running for every two hours or so is what the crews are telling me. And they've been doing that to keep the buses warm, keep those engines going so there aren't any maintenance issues that could potentially cause the kids at the bus stops to have to wait any longer. So they're not wanting to do that. Um, and the good thing also to know is that the the school district is wanting to advise parents to dress their kids in layers to avoid any um, kind of sickness or illnesses. They're just wanting folks to stay very warm. And again, if you have any individual health concerns for your child, the school district suggests that you contact the school principal. But again, as buses are making their way out, they have been running every two or so hours for warmth for sure. Uh, live at the Taylor's bus stop, bus center, Aubrey Jackson, WIFF News 4. Thank you, Aubrey. Well, pets are also in danger when the weather turns this cold. Animal officials across the upstate are urging pet owners to use caution. Winter after winter, officials at Greenville County Animal Care see cases of cold weather cruelty at their worst. They say even so-called outdoor dogs should be brought inside when the weather is this cold. And you can also be charged for failing to protect your pets. In Greenville, the fine for leaving a pet outdoors without proper shelter is more than $1,000. A warning this morning from firefighters to think before you step out on a frozen lake, pond, or river. Firefighters say it can be tempting to test the waters and skate on the ice. However, officials warn getting on the ice can lead to other dangers. Nearly 22 years ago, two boys died in Greenville County after falling into icy cold water. 
Hypothermia can shut down your body's core, making it difficult to move your arms and legs. Firefighters also warn to keep your pets off the ice. And remember, you can get live temperature updates all day on the WYFF4 mobile app. There you'll also get any weather alerts the second they're issued. Five people were killed on South Carolina roads during the New Year's holiday weekend, but numbers out this morning show traffic fatalities went down last year. Across the state, there were 964 deaths in 2017. That's compared to 1,020 in 2016. Greenville County here, there were 70 deaths in 2017, 17 fewer the year before 87 died in 2016. To Anderson County in 2017, 43 people lost their lives compared to 57 who died in 2016. And finally, in Spartanburg County, a small decline here, 51 people died in 2017 compared to 54 the year before. Well, the land that once held the old Greenville Memorial Auditorium has been sold. This is video from 1997 when the auditorium was imploded. Greenville Gateway Developers LLC sold the property to Kana Gateway LLC. The company is owned by hotelier Raj Patel of Clemson. The property was sold last well, consumers are not taking proactive steps to keep their purse last November for $3 million and is nearly two acres. Personal information protected from identity theft. A recent survey, 61% of those surveyed said they're more worried about cybersecurity today than five years ago, but only 37% have signed up for an identity theft protection solution. 28% say they have no plans to sign up for one. Research shows consumers monitored their identity by checking online bank and credit card accounts for unauthorized charges and checking social media for fraudulent posts. Well, the Bulldogs are back in Georgia. Excited fans were there to greet the Rolls Bowl champions Tuesday after a six-hour flight from Pasadena. The team toting that Rose Bowl trophy and as tradition mandates, the bell rang out to celebrate the victory. The Bulldogs will take on Alabama in the national championship game on Monday. Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy will be remembered in Greenville starting next Saturday. It will be celebrated throughout through King Legacy Week. It will kick off at 10 a.m. next Saturday at Bethlehem Baptist Church Family Life Center. The King Legacy HBCU. 646 now. Let's get right to weather and traffic together. That's right. And before you head out the door this morning, watch out for those school buses. Richard it is in to check out the this morning from firefighters to think before you step out on a frozen lake, pond, or river. Hypothermia can shut down your body's core, making it difficult. Firefighters say it can be tempting to test the waters and skate on the ice. If you fall in, move your arms and legs. Firefighters also warn to keep your pets off the ice. Another reminder this morning to keep your family safe, check your chimney. Chimneys cause several house fires every year because soot can build up inside without you knowing. The experts urge to get your chimney inspected every year. Burning a fire for longer time than usual can put you at risk if your chimney is not up to standard. And remember, you can get live temperature updates all day on the WY54 mobile app. That's where you also get any weather alerts the second they are issued. Bricks here at WYFF4. We learned our grand total for the Holiday Sunshine Fund. Get this. This year, you donated $103,900.54. That's more than $10,000 more than last year. Every dollar goes to charities helping people right here at home this winter. Again, thank you for all of your generosity. Thank you. New this morning, you now have 418 million reasons to play the Mega Millions on Friday. No one hit the jackpot in last night's drawing, making the new jackpot worth $418 million. The odds of picking all six numbers is 1 in 302.6 million. Well, another major lottery drawing tonight's the Powerball, the jackpot worth more than $440 million. It could climb even higher before tonight's drawing, depending on ticket sales. I always say I'm going to buy them. I never and you buy never them. do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> same. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll win. My grandma used to do the same. She'd say, when I win the lottery, and we'd tell her, you have to buy a ticket first, grandma. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's take a final look at traffic and weather now. How are we looking? On the Today Show, it's cold, and it's getting colder. Lots to hit the Northeast. Well, that's fitting for our Greenville News. Shelter a godsend during the cold weather, so you can read about the uh, shelters that are open. If you uh, well, I, you, you weren't here last week, but I told people to start their cars before they left. And, uh, and that's you need a warm place to go. I think I heard you tell people to break the law. 
break the law. Yeah. The I law. read WIFF4.com that night and it said starting your car and leaving it unattended is against the law. Who knew? So Richard comes for one day, he tells people to break the law, and he tells us about using the blow, blow torches, torches on the, the pipes. Richard. I won't be back. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. You do need to warm up your car. Yeah, morning. it's going to be cold today and tomorrow. That wind's back. 10 to 20 mile per hour winds tomorrow will make it even rougher, so make sure the kids are bundled up as they head off to school, especially tomorrow. Hard to believe. Snow in the low country today, too. Also hard to believe. And we're taking a live look from our Woodruff Road Skycam 385, picking up as folks head back to school. Have a great day.